Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to How to Become an Animator. I'm Sir Wade and today I have another animation tips video just for you. Now I recently just came back from the Animation Collaborative's Epic Winter Intensive. It was a seven day animation masterclass. It was awesome. I'll make another video to talk more about that. I was actually filming this video like a week before I went and then I decided to wait and see if I learned anything new with the class that I wanted to add and oh man, it blew everything I knew out of the water. I had to like redo the whole video so I'm reshooting it now to bring you some of the stuff I learned while I was there. And a ton of the stuff I learned I wanted to share with you guys is from an animation supervisor over at Disney. His name is Daniel Klug, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry if I'm butchering it. I think that's how you say it. But he was there teaching a bunch of stuff in Maya, a bunch of really cool practical stuff that I just blew my mind. At first I was like, yeah, I know this. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Oh, whoa. What the? So I was impressed is what I'm getting at. And I wanted to share some of that with you guys. So today we're gonna to be talking about nine Maya scripts and tools that you need to at least think about putting into your Maya session. I remember when I was a student, I didn't touch the hotkeys. I didn't like mess with them or change them up. I just used the ones that were kind of built into Maya. And I would never add scripts or tools into the software because I didn't really understand how that all worked. Plugins and I don't know, I just didn't go there. What a missed opportunity. I didn't find out until like a year and a half later how useful you can make Maya just by adding some stuff to it. Oh man, you can save so much time. So this video is going to help you make life better. You're gonna animate faster. You might actually get to sleep now and then. So please use some of these, download them, try them out. We've got some good stuff to cover. So let's start off with a bang. The very best animation tool set. I'm gonna start off strong with like the best one that we all know about, Animbot. This started off as a free plugin called A-Tools, which has now evolved into Animbot, which is this like behemoth of a tool set for Maya. It's it's got everything. The creator of this tool set is named Alan. You may have seen his Facebook group over here or the video he made to talk about this project over here. Now there's no way for me to talk about every single thing this program does in this video. We gotta, you know, not be here for 20 minutes. So I think there's like a three and a half minute video, 150 ways to animate faster in Maya. I'm just gonna like show you a clip from that here. Reset a pose, reset only transition, rotation or scale, set a custom default pose, gradually blend the pose to its default, avoid gimbal locks, ease in and out, create wave and noise, amp or deamp a curve, amp or deamp a lot of curves, make keys linear, improve dead moving holds, offset poses without offsetting keys, create, organize and select group of controllers, isolate groups of objects, rotate controls from wherever the hell you want, go back in time, and most importantly, don't lose work when Maya crashes. Everything demonstrated here can be assigned to a hotkey. Now obviously there's a ton in there. I can't cover it all in this video, so I highly recommend go check that one out. If there's one tool set that you take away from this video, it's that one. And good news for everybody, Alan's hooked it up with a discount promo code for everybody to use watching this video. You guys are always asking what to use and what software to learn if you wanna work at a studio. Well, if you're using Maya, this is what you should be using because a lot of the studios are actually using this exact tool set. And uh, yeah, go enjoy and it's totally worth it. Don't even sweat it. Next up, switching gears. We have one of the most basic scripts that could ever exist. And it's one of my favorites, something I learned about in school and I still use it to this day. Well, until, you know, the one before has it included. But hey, if you just want this one thing, Tween Machine. Tween Machine is a great little slider that if you have a key on frame one and a key on frame 10, and you set a key right in the middle, by default, it's just gonna be kind of between the two values. Tween Machine just gives you a slider to favor one or the other adjacent keys next to it. So it's a really good way to favor poses and switch up the timing and the spacing of whatever you're animating very quickly. Now, another one I learned about in school and I still use to this day is called BH Ghost. Now Maya has its own ghosting tools. And if you're not familiar with ghosting, it's like onion skinning. If neither of those work for you, then just Google it. Maya's built-in tool for this is kind of clunky. It makes things really slow and I'm not a fan of it. But BH Ghost is super cool because it'll give you a silhouette read of your character in 3D space. So as you tumble, you actually can you know, see a 3D outline of where your character's going to be without all the other messy details. You can decide what frame this happens on, the color, the thickness of the line, all that kind of stuff. Really useful, definitely check it out. Now the same creator has also come out with two additional scripts that I wanted to mention. One is called Anim Proxy, BH Anim Proxy, and it's a really quick way to take a complex model if your computer's not super powerful and to just kind of dumb it down to either spheres or cubes. You grab a body part or you grab a control and you assign the anim proxy to it. And what it'll do is it'll just kind of create a proxy mesh or just a really dumbed down base version of the character that you can kind of customize and you can either visualize your animation using these shapes or you can even use these to drive the animation. If you move these around, it'll set keys on the actual control curves that you'd normally be using. And it takes a lot less for your computer to render these than it does to figure out how to display a dense mesh with deformations and everything else. So this can help out with a lot of the workflow and just speeding things up until you get to the polish stage and then you can you know, bring all that high res geometry back and really focus in on the small stuff. One more from the same creator is the Wave It plugin, which is a way to kind of block in different parts of the wave principle that will help speed you up in getting that nice wavy curve motion, whether it's on a tail or a cape or something that just needs to flutter or flow with that you know, pendulum ball 
tail motion thing. But one word of caution, if you are a beginner or you know, you're a student still, if you have not yet mastered the wave principle on your own, do not download this plugin. You do not need to be using this until you've already mastered this and you're just looking for something to speed you up. If you can do this exact thing on your own, then go for it and speed up your process. But if you haven't yet figured this out, do not use this as a crutch. It's going to screw you over later in your career. So you have been warned. Now this is the last one of mine. And then we start getting into Daniel's scripts that he told us about, but one more from me is the studio library. Now this is actually super cool. At DreamWorks, we had something called the pose library. And it was essentially the same idea that you could create, you know, hand poses, points, facial expressions, you could do a walk cycle, you could do all these different things in your software and you could save them and you could refer back to them later because if you've done a pose you really like and you're like, ah, that's really good, I might wanna use that for another shot or something for a certain rig. You can essentially save that, reapply it later or blend between different faces. If you've got angry and surprised, you can apply one and then blend through to the other one to give you kind of a good starting position to then continue refining. It just saves you a lot of time reselecting controls and moving things around a lot. It takes a lot of work to just pose out a simple point that looks really, really good. So if you get it once, save it. So the next time you need a point, you don't have to sit there getting every single little finger control. You can just reapply your point. This is a good tool for if you're like a senior in college and you're doing like a thesis project or something and you need to you know, speed up the workflow. So this will help keep you on model, essentially. You can kind of set a visual standard of what certain expressions should look like or finger poses and just cut out on some of the work. But again, if you're a student and you're just learning animation, you should be doing all that posing on your own every time to get better and faster at it. Some of the tools that Daniel told us about are A-Tools, Animbot, same as I mentioned earlier, but three other ones that he told us about. The first one is Guppy Animation Tools. Now I'm gonna put, again, all the links for this stuff in the description below, so don't sweat it. You can head down there after the video and check out all this stuff. So Guppy Animation Tools has a bunch of different scripts inside of it. Some of the ones that I wanna point out to you. One of the scripts inside is called Clever Keys. Now, if you haven't seen my graph editor video, you should go watch the graph editor video, because it's a good one. But when you're working in the graph editor, you may have noticed that if you have a nice clean spline and you decide to set a key somewhere in the middle, you hit S and it does this. You may have noticed that it just kind of messes with the curve. It's not as clean and you have to kind of go back in here and fix it, which is annoying and it shouldn't do that. Clever Keys fixes that and makes it so that every time you set a key, it actually inserts keys instead of setting them. And inserting a key essentially just adds a key along the curve rather than setting one on top of whatever you have before. It does more than that as well. It'll actually set keys depending on where your mouse is. So if your mouse is in the channel box or in the graph editor, it'll kind of pay attention to where you're hovering over. And it also allows you to sync up the channel box with your graph editor. If you wanna just select translates or rotates or something, it'll actually change what you see in the graph editor and filter by those curves, which is awesome. The next one I wanna mention within Guppy Tools is the slide animation keys. Slide animation keys give you a slider that lets you do all kinds of stuff with your keys. You select a block of keys, you can slide them closer or farther away from previous and adjacent keys to like create easy ease-ins and ease-outs, or you can blend it into like a linear curve. You can have it go towards a default value of zero. You can have it average the curves out, stretch them all around. You can just shift an entire block of animation up or down. So if you're doing something in IK, and you move the body and you need to move this hand without having to worry about like multiple keys and world space or something. You can just grab a bunch of keys and go and just shift it in whatever direction you need. There's a lot more within Guppy Animation Tools, but those are the ones I wanted to tell you about. And we have one more set of scripts that I want to tell you about, a couple highlights within them. This set is from Aaron Coracell. I think that's how you say his name. Again, hoping, hoping for the best with these last names. And these are all really small workflow scripts that can be just really, really helpful to save you a lot of time and keep you from having to click, go to different menus, that kind of thing. The first one is the negate script, which is a way to flip your curves. If any of you have ever taken animation from the right side of the body and tried to copy it to the left side of the body or a ball bounce rotation, something like that, trying to like copy paste curves somewhere else in your animation, you may have noticed that sometimes when you copy paste curves or splines, they're backwards and things like act the inverse of what they should. So it's just one quick script that you can link to a hotkey and just hit a button and it'll flip it so that it no longer is inverted. So it makes it a lot easier to copy paste curves in your animation. There's also some really quick scripts for toggle. For example, toggle sound. So if you are you know, animating something with dialogue and you're playing it over and over and over and you're hearing that same line again and again, you may be tempted to mute your computer, but then that mutes your music or whatever you might be listening to, podcasts, whatever. So a toggle sound hotkey could be really helpful just to hit the button and it stops Maya from playing sound. And there are other ways you can do that but it's more clicks. There's also toggle image plane, which is a quick way to not have image planes in your background if you're trying to do a play blast or something and not have that in the back. And then the same goes for NURBS curves. NURBS curves are generally those control rings around your character that just are a lot of visual noise. You can just have a button that just turns them off and on. Again, nicer for if you're play blasting something for review or feedback, you know, that kind of thing. There's a bunch more push pull to move stuff around in the graph editor. There's snapping, there's moving, there's retiming, there's snap to time. And 
There's tons of different scripts on this page, so again, check them all out down below, test them out, see what you like. These are some of the ones I wanted to tell you about. Hey, so I realized when I'm edit I'm currently editing the video and I realized that I forgot one of the scripts. So I thought I'd pop back in and add that in before it's too late. So View Switcher is another tool that you should definitely check out, especially if you have limited screen space, if you use a laptop or you only have one monitor, or you end up just switching between a lot of cameras often. It's basically gonna allow you to set a hotkey that will create a marking menu. If you don't know what a marking menu is, it's one of these things that pops up in Maya if you hold down the right mouse button or the space bar. And so it gives you the this little option to drag between different cameras and quickly switch between them in your viewport. And if you just press down the button without holding it down and pulling up the whole menu, if you just tap the button, it'll jump between your last two cameras. So if you're jumping between like a perspective workspace you're tumbling around in and like your, your play blast camera that you're animating to for, you know, animating to camera with. This will just let you jump between the two very quickly, very easily, without having to do a lot of extra clicking. But yeah, I realized I forgot to mention that when I actually filmed the video, so anyway. Back to it. And the very last script that I want to tell you about is just the ones that you make yourself. Most of you probably don't do a lot of scripting or coding. Some of you might. It's not going to make a difference either way. But you can make really easy scripts yourself in Maya. And even if you have no experience coding, don't sweat it. I have a video a while back where I was using these sliders and dials, and I had different things linked to these buttons. If I hit this button, it creates a cube and puts it above origin. If I now hit this button, it creates a mash network out of that cube, which I can now do ridiculously cool stuff with. And every time I hit a button, I'd create a cube or set a key or you know grab the left side of the body or and grab all the controls on the right hand because that takes forever grabbing all those little finger controls and stuff. But you can set different hotkeys or different operations, different tools. That kind of stuff can all be linked to scripts and scripts can be linked to hotkeys and buttons. So anything you want to do, you can pretty much make a script on your own. It's really easy and if you want to know more about that, let me know in the description. We'll make a, you know, a short video on that in the future. But I just want to let you know that it's actually really easy to do, and you should look into it. But that's about it for this video. If you've got any feedback or things that I missed, scripts that you want to share with other people, throw them in the comments down below. And as always, if you're looking for more educational resources, head over to Patreon. We're doing a bunch of Q&As over there and other interesting things that are going to be coming up soon. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on great videos like these. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I hope some of these were interesting to you. Please check them out down below and try them. Try out a couple of these, see what you think. It's going to be so much better when Maya is working for you and you're not working so hard for it. So install some of these tools, get some extra sleep, have fun animating, and I'll see you in the next video.